good morning and today we are in Odessen, Denmark and we are here to see H.C. Anderson's house and his museum and also an open air museum. Apparently this is a brand new museum and it's very interactive so I'm super excited, let's, let's go see. Have you tried something like this before? Uh, no. Do you no. mind being on camera too or no? Uh, no, that's fine, yeah. Okay, so, no, I have not tried this. No, I'll just show you how it works real quick. So you have this uh, headphone, there's a little funny thing on top of it. It's going to be on top of your head. Uh, and this black part should be facing forwards. The stripes and the lights should go backwards when you have it on. And then uh, on the right side, there's a plus and minus button for the volume, if you need to adjust the volume, of course. And then inside, you should... Uh, these are on the floor, so whenever you're close to those, the sound begins automatically, and when you leave them again, it stops. So you can like, choose yourself which sounds to listen to. They're like stories, informations, and uh, sound effects. Uh, there's no specific order on the stickers, so you can choose yourself where mm -hmm. to start and where to go afterwards. The exhibition begins over here where it says Duckling. You can go both right and left, and then from there it's a one-way trip, so you just keep going forward, and you'll come back here again. It's a one-way trip, no return? Exactly. No, you can, yeah. <laughs> you'll return back here again. Hopefully. Okay. <laughs> um, so, when uh, when I start the headset, there's going to be a quick introduction. A lady will speak to you, tell you a little bit about the place. You can just stand here, and then when she's finished, you're ready to go. Okay. All right. So here you go, Sam. Okay. Go. Duck. Denmark has the best museums I have seen in the world. The fact that you can just wear these headphones and then walk in when you see an audio sign on the ground, it's going to tell you about the story, and then there's also visuals involved. <sighs> I don't know, I don't really, hmm. Denmark really has the world beaten right now when it comes to museums and storytelling. This is what I'm talking about, how interactive this museum is. So the Snow Queen, you can literally look up at these different images and it's showing you the story, the fairy tale. Like, this is crazy. They are destined from the day they are born. Something else. are not understood, are subjected to mockery and teasing when they go out. Loneliness and weeping when they are at home. This museum is just very beautiful. I love the woodwork, the storytelling, the interacting. The kids are so happy in this museum, especially the fairy tale part, and I think that's that's when you know you have made a true good museum. The kids and the parents can enjoy the museum together. This is the Memorial Hall, and it tells the life of Hans Christian Andersen from the beginning to his, to his humble beginnings in Odessen, leaving, saying goodbye to his parents, and heading to the big city of Copenhagen. And when he made it to Copenhagen, he was told he wasn't gonna be anything until someone recognized his talent and sent him off to school. He found out how much he loved traveling, and that inspired him more with his stories. Him in Naples, Italy, meeting wonderful families, trying to find love. Sadly, he did not get the chance to find love. And then coming back full circle, coming back full circle to his city, Odison, and becoming an honorary citizen, that is the key. I don't know about y'all, but that would make my heart extremely warm. The city I was born in, the city I tried to get away because when you're growing up, you want to become bigger in life. You want to bring something to the world and leave your city and grow up and he did and he came back and he was an honorary he became an honorary citizen <sighs> this is a beautiful beautiful way to end the tour here at this museum I'm not gonna lie, I really do love Danish museums. There's something about them. They just make them interactive and very fun to be in. They're not boring. And I just learned so much about H.C. Anderson's life. I didn't realize as an American that he wrote so many, so many stories, so many fairy tales that he wrote The Ugly Duckling, The Little Mermaid. And then just the fact that his stories, you never knew where they were going to end up. He was not afraid to have a dark ending, but then you do get Disney 
coming out, you do get Disney taking over The Little Mermaid and having to turn it into a happy ending for kids. All right, quick pause before we get to where we're going. You gotta love City Halls. That is Otison City Hall. Breathtaking, beautiful, but let's get, let's get going. If you're wondering, yes, it smells very old in this church. But this one is not as gaudy as a lot of churches. This one's very simplistic. I'm not gonna lie, Otison, y'all probably win the not focusing too much on your church back in the day look. There is not a lot going on in this church. There's the organ, very beautiful and stunning. There's the altarpiece, all right, check mark that. You guys have the pulpit, check mark that. But not a lot of gold. Oh, wow. Okay, that organ. That's, that's a beauty right there. I feel like that's what they needed to focus on back in church, back in the day at least. Not too much on the gold and huge murals that cost it a lot and focus on the people in the city. This is H.C. Anderson's childhood home. Three families lived in this home and this was one of the lower income neighborhoods here in Otison in the 1800s. And he left his home when he was 14, because back in the day here in Denmark, that was the thing to do to go work, especially if your family did not have that much money. So Anderson's family was a very poor family back in the day. And three families lived in this house, his childhood home. And this room is the shoemaker's room. If you're coming to see his childhood home, this is it, the small building that three different families lived in. Outside of the home, there is a garden, but this garden was not here when he was a child. There was actually a wall here. Do I think you should still come and see his childhood home though? Why not? It comes included with your museum and plus you'll get some walking in. Future Davion here and we're here in Copenhagen, Denmark and you can actually come and see Hans Christian Andersen's gravestone. But we're gonna give it back to present Davion in Odesson. I tell everyone whenever you're traveling around the world, talk to people and they really just show you more about the world. So I met these two people. Hey. hey. And uh, what was your name, sir? Maurits. Davion. Hey man. And yours? Liliana. <laughs> Davion, nice to meet Hi. you. And you're from the Netherlands? Netherlands. And then you're from? Poland. And we were just having a conversation about the differences between America. So like the southern part of America and the northeast part of America. And then they gave me the perspective on the European side about how like... Northern part, there's a heavy winter. So people used to be, uh, they need to be prepared. Uh, so they're more strict because in the winter there's no food. In the south, you can be more, a little bit more relaxed. So yeah, then people... They don't need to be so strict because the sun is always there. No, that's how it was. And that's how we can imagine maybe it was also in America that North people were more struggling about uh, yeah, future coming and heavy winters. And same in Europe. Yeah, and I, I think it's quite a uh, difference between people from North and South. I guess what I'm really taking away from this conversation is we're all the same but so different in so many ways. Because when I think about being from the South, being from Texas, it really is warm and we're a lot more chill and open going and saying hey to everyone. But then also, oh, I just lost my, I just lost my train of thought. Dang, just lost my train of thought. But also you're struggling because yeah, uh, every day we are, we are fighting for a better, uh, yeah, better day and better tomorrow. So I think everyone has uh, own fight in life and for life. And that is what Anderson Christian was really trying to tell people, that we're all struggling with something inside. And when we get to the end of our life, what are we going to be? Super interesting, man. Great to meet you, man. Nice and meeting you. The way trip. how you're talking and how you're presenting is <laughs> great. Bye-bye, man. I appreciate Bye. it. Hey, though. Oh, 
from the 23rd tent closed. Well, I guess we're not going to an open air museum here in Odessen. Because they are closed right now. Make sure you do your research, which, okay, I did my research and it said it was temporarily closed, but I was like, what if it's not closed? But I do think I can still show you some of the old buildings, but we just won't have the museum experience. This is the best I can give y'all. These old buildings. Guess we'll have to come back to Odison to actually see all of this. So I'm guessing this is just a taste of what it would look like at the open air museum if it was open. I think this is the train station. I don't see yet. It's just like a super, super small station. I don't know. It's kind of, it's kind of cute. Track one to Odison, Odison, nine minutes. Honestly, I'm glad I still tried to go to the open air museum because it brought me to this train station and it's just such a small, cute train station. I don't know, central stations are always nice, but just being out in the countryside of Odison just feels, I don't know, liberating. I don't, is this Odison still? I don't know. So I was wondering, why is Odison named Odison as a city? And I looked it up and apparently it's because the god, hmm. apparently it's because of Odin, which is from Norse mythology. This used to be a sanctuary city where they would actually pray to Odin. So I guess it makes sense. An educated guess that was, that was right about the city of uh, Odison. Correct me if I'm wrong, but is this to air up y'all's bikes and is it free? Because it looks free to me. That is one way you can tell. That is one way to know that this city really does use bikes. Sadly, we did not get to go to the open air museum today, but I did get to go to the H.C. Anderson Museum and it was so great. Danes really do have the museum masterpiece down. And then we got to go to the street food market here. And Denmark has some great street food markets. And this one, I had, oh, I've had i never had Ukrainian food, but this food was just so good. I had this ham and cheese, fry, I had fried ham and cheese, basically. And then the tomato sauce, oh, it was so good just dipping it in there. And then I got some dumplings, some mashed potato dumplings. So there's mashed potatoes in the dumplings. And it was just so soft and just, different and it's that type of food where you know you just want to go lay down i don't know where i'm headed to next but if you want to follow me on my journey to 196 countries hit that subscribe button and watch this video to see more of denmark in the meantime i'm gonna go lay down because that was some really good food